thank you for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. Many of you are watching this video because I have it linked in my first video. I really couldn't get in depth because I'd be changing the subject. However, my first video is called uh, Catholic YouTube is Getting Toxic, A Call for Church Unity. So today I wanna to talk about us being divided and seeing the solution that is given to us in scripture. So let me paint the picture. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, and so on, it says, I urge you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, who is Peter, or I belong to Christ. So we'll stop there now that I've painted the problem and we'll get to the solution next. But let's make sure that we understand that this problem that the early Catholic Church was facing in Corneth is the same type of problem of division that we are having today. So let me draw some parallels. And it's good uh, Bible study as well. Okay. Actually, before that, in my personal life, I have experienced such conversations of division. My favorite one was, well, my wife went to Catholic grade school and she's better than you. And she said this. Today, I'm not gonna unpack all that and try to prove to you all that I was right or that she was right. All I'm saying is right away, there are two different messages and the person accepted the one that was beneficial to him and that accepted to him even if it was challenging. Another big one that I heard discussed before was someone stated, I will never go to St. Matthew's Church. I will only attend Mass at St. XYZ's Church. They're both Catholic churches, right? How can one feel accepted in one and rejected in another? Well, if you dig a little bit, you see that one church, St. XYZ, accepts those individuals, right? Those people that attend St. XYZ have either a lifestyle or an issue that St. XYZ celebrates. They ignore the parts in scripture or tradition or magisterium that says otherwise. See, those people there are diehard parishioners of that parish because they have a God that could be led around. I'm just going to be straight up. They have a pastor or pastors who will tell them what they want to hear. So they are attracted to that. While St. Matthew's, who may be just a regular Catholic church, will not do that, will not accept it, will not let certain things happen in the, in the church. And those people may be attracted to that, but for sure the people here will not be. They want a church that obeys their will because in this parish, they have found a God that always agrees with their will. So when we look at the discussion that I had with my friend, he told me that his wife was right and that I was wrong. That was only one person affected, me. When it comes to parishes, you're now looking at maybe a thousand people affected with this division. The thousand people that attend this church and the thousand people at this church. Okay. Now the major issue is we have some YouTubers getting 50,000, 100,000 views a day. And they inject what they want to say. They throw in a little nostalgia. They throw in a little... Uh, 
urgency, maybe give you a little anxiety, get you angry, revved up, and you come back the next day and get that fill. The problem has become so big, which I discussed in my last video, there are different niches for each person. Because as humans, we wanna follow that person that tells us what we wanna hear, fact. And when they do that, it causes division. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Taylor Marshall, or I belong to Michael Lofton, or I belong to Pope Francis, or I belong to Christ. We have this, we have this in the church today. I follow a more traditional aspect, or I belong to Nova Sordo, or I belong to Charismatic, and so on and so on. We have a problem. Because this person is telling me what I wanna hear, I naturally assume I am right. He is agreeing with me, naturally he is right, and we're never challenged and we always make the other guys the enemy. We have to wake up from this because we are one church. So let's just draw some parallels very quickly and uh, we can get a better understanding, some Bible study, and we can prepare a plan of action for our church unity. Corneth was a major hub, a major city. They had families there, it was a port city, they had their own economy, they had schools, and they lived life like much of the world at that time. We see that Paul starts one of our first Catholic churches there in Corneth, and he works very hard for about a year and a half. After he leaves, some people come in, obviously, and like I said in my other video, we tend to make things more complicated than they are. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, his first letter, he will write and address five issues. We already got that drama going on. There's five issues he wants to talk about. We're only going to focus on the first one, and that is division among that church. And we see some other players here. Apollos, we see Cephas, and we see, of course, people clinging to Jesus and so on different groups. We call it today, right? These people got their fanboys, they got their Bible study group, they got their clique, whatever you want to call it. I want to mention before I even go any further, there's nothing that Apollos did wrong. There's nothing that Paul did wrong. There's nothing that Cephas, our first Pope, Peter, did wrong. It is the people that began to divide amongst themselves. How can I say that they didn't do anything wrong? Well, it's not stated in the Bible. It never says they were working. They never told someone to get out and so on. So let's talk about who Apollos is. Many of us know who Jesus Christ is. Many of us know Paul. Many of us uh, at least should know Peter, our first Pope. But who is Apollos? And we could see he's cross-referenced in Acts chapter 18. And what's going on? And what he's doing is like what we see on Catholic YouTube today. He is elegant with his words. He is a bold speaker. He is independent, a teacher. Further in Acts chapter 18, verses 24 to chapter 19, verse 1, we see he is an Alexandrian Jew. He knows the scripture. It is important again to mention that he knows or that he speaks boldly. Yet something is going wrong in this church. He sounds like an absolute gift from God. A Jew who knows the ancient scriptures. Maybe he can explain to us the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy or Messiah's prophecies. But yet something is going wrong. We're seeing division among the church. We're seeing people are fooled by the words that they hear, the elegance, right? Maybe the, sh the uh, look of the person. Oh, that, 
Taylor Marshall got his hair slicked back. He got a nice house in the background, always dressed up in that suit. I'm not calling him out. I'm just saying he's the most handsome uh, Catholic evan uh, evangelist we got out there. So, you know, uh, I'd like to think I'm number two, by the way. All right. But right, maybe even appearance has, a, has an issue or has some value to the person. They want to follow that person. What they say, maybe their education. And people are fooled. We see also that Apollos is taken to the side and Priscilla and another individual will explain Christianity to him, Christianity to him. Right? They get him back on track. Look, you're you're causing an issue here. So how did Paul solve this issue? How could we use St. Paul's answer in the church today? Those are the two questions we have. So Paul says again in 1 Corinthians, now I'm starting at verse 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And verse 14, Paul even goes further and he says, I give thanks to God that I baptize none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say you were baptized in my name. He further explains how he baptized another family and he says, I don't know if I baptized anyone else, but verse 17, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel and not with the wisdom of human elegance so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. Paul is saying, I just came to preach the gospel. I don't want anyone to baptize in my name. I don't want this. I don't want groups to follow me. I want people to know about Christ. It is no longer, I follow Apollos or Paul or Cephas or Christ. It is, I belong to the TLM. Or some of you say, I belong to the charismatic movement. Or I belong with Pope Francis or I belong to Christ. This is where we find ourselves today. Today we find ourselves that I belong to Taylor Marshall that I belong to Michael Lofton, that I belong to Pope Francis, and to some of us, I belong to Jesus Christ. That's where we are. We have our fanboys, we have our church clique, we have our group of friends, we have the parish we go to, and those are our people. That's where we are. Is that our future? Paul doesn't seem to think so. He tries to correct that. And I know many of you that have lasted this long. We've been at, we're at 13 minutes. Many of you that have lasted this long know the answer is church unity. Just today. Again. I'm in all the, the you know the Catholic Facebook groups and YouTube or Twitter and all that stuff, right? Just today, someone talking about I have to leave this room because there's people here that uh, don't exclusively, I'm not kidding, exclusively go to the TLM. This is right. This is wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. We've got to the point where people cannot be in the same Facebook group anymore. God help us if, if we were ever put in the same room together. And we're supposed to be the one church, one holy Catholic apostolic church. To people causing division, for people who have put a YouTuber 
on some sort of pedestal or think that your teaching is on a pedestal because a YouTuber or because your, your grandpa is a deacon and he makes up his own rules, but he's popular, so it's okay, right? Christ did not give him or those people or that tradition the keys to the kingdom. He gave it to Peter. Not to my opinion, not to books. And Isaiah, what does it say? Who, whatever, to the person who got the keys, whatever door you open, it is open. Whatever door you close, it is closed. You will be like a peg in the ground. You're not going anywhere. Jesus repeats this to Peter. You have the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. He didn't give it to you or your idea or your division. I understand the frustration, but it's nothing, nothing is going to work until we can tackle church unity. Like Paul said, were we baptized in Taylor Marshall? Were we baptized in Mother Angelica and their names? Or were we baptized in Christ? Let's answer Paul's question. Is Christ divided? Not that I could tell. No tradition says so. No magisterial teaching says so. Scripture that doesn't say so. Then we should be like Christ. What I said today is hard and the nerve of me to bring up such a topic from my first two videos. But it has to be said. Which way are you going? Can you as a charismatic Catholic sit at the same table with Novus Ordo and with TLM and with those that celebrate the Divine Liturgy come together and say, how can we unite I'm not saying change anything from our traditions. So don't put that in my mouth. Don't say that's what I'm saying. As I said in the other video, I attend TLM. I attend Novus Ordo. I attend Divine Liturgy. I'll be honest, I've never been to a charismatic Catholic mass or prayer service. I've never been invited to one. Uh, one time, but I couldn't make it. But hey, do it. I've been to an African American Catholic Mass, which is not a stone tradition, I understand, but there's elements there that are different. But we have to get together. We have the same teachings. All right, thank you. There's just a couple things. I will have some videos linked below. I want you to please subscribe, comment, like, share the videos. If what I am doing is important to you, please keep in touch either with comments or you can mail, email me at my website uh, for any reason. But I want to build a community. I want us to love one another and I want us to celebrate each other. We are not the enemies of each other. Don't let those people make you think that. We're brothers and sisters. Paul uses that word, my brothers, but if you look at the, I was doing research, you look at the, you look at the word that they're translating, it engulfs both male and female, one. There's no division among the people. I guarantee you, if I went to TLM, said I go to Novus Ordo, I'm here visiting, they'll shake my hand, and they, they, they do this, They some of them, I was in Texas, and they saw I was not from there. Shake my hand. How do you like the service? You want to get? We have coffee in the back room. Great. They know I went to Nova Sordo. They can care less. They're just happy I visited that day. I'm trying to think what else? Man, there's just a bunch of examples. Let's start creating those stories of unity. All right. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Let's do something. Let's start right now. God bless you.